Welcome back. In the last two videos, we explained the idea behind support vector machines, how they work, and we saw how it, uh, it transformed into a minimization problem where we try to maximize the margin between the two classes. Remember that we used it for binary classification where data is linearly um, separable. Now, just to have a quick overview of how the algorithm works, so what we try to do is we try to define an optimal hyperplane by maximizing the margin. So we try to find the best hyperplane that separates the two classes. And it can be actually um, sort of extended for non-linearly separable problems by having a penalty term for misclassifications. So if the data is not linearly separable, um, support vector machines at least they try to find the, the best type of plane that at least tries to separate the data by minimizing the error. We'll come to that in the next slide. Um, or if the data is not linearly, linearly separable, what uh, SVM can do is it can map or we can map the data into a higher dimensional space where it's easier to classify with linear decision surfaces. So the idea is to reformulate the problem so the data is mapped implicitly to this uh, uh, space. Now the beauty of support vector machines is that if the data is linearly separable then there is a unique global minimum value. What that means is if there is a solution then it will be found. If the data is linearly separable then it's possible to find a, a, a maximum margin. I didn't speak about local minimums and global minimums in my videos, but these are just for finding the minimum value of the error, where and the, the rate of change is becomes sort of the error becomes zero, which means we have found the solution. An ideal support vector machine analysis should produce a hyperplane that completely separates the vectors or the cases or the examples into two non-overlapping cases. We've been studying that over the last two videos. However, perfect separation may not, may not be possible or it may result in a model with so many cases that the model does not actually classify correctly. In this situation, support vector machines, what they do is they find the hyperplane that maximizes the margin and minimizes the misclassification. And that's done by introducing what is known as the slack variable. So what, what, that, what that does is it allows some instances to fall off the margin but it will penalize them. So the idea here is to find the hyperplane that maximizes the margin but at the same time it will minimize the misclassifications. Again by introducing what is known as the slack variable. Now non-linearly separable data support vector machines uh, of course, the easiest and simplest way is to separate two groups of data or two groups of classes um, with you know, a straight line or a flat plane or a surface as we mentioned before or with an n-dimensional hyperspace. But that's not always possible. There are situations where a non-linear region can separate the groups more efficiently. Now, support vector machines they handle this by using a kernel function which is non-linear to map the data into a different space so we have the data in its uh, 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 sort of original space and what we do is we use a kernel function to map that data into a different space where a hyperplane which is linear cannot be used to do the separation what that means is a non-linear function is learned by a linear learning machine in a high dimensional feature space while the capacity of the system is controlled by a parameter that does not depend on the dim dimensionality of the space. This is known as the kernel trick. So if you heard of the kernel trick, what it means is that we have a function called the kernel function which transforms the data into a higher dimensional feature space to make it possible to perform linear separation. So the data is not linearly separable. The kernel trick uses a kernel function to map the data or to transform the data into a higher dimensional feature space which makes it possible to perform linear separation. Let's have a simple example. If we look at these points now, these points are not linearly separable as you can see we can't draw a straight line to uh, separate them but 
the kernel to execute the kernel function to transform this data from x1, x2 space to x1 prime, x2 prime space. These are different features you can say resulting from using these features somehow in the kernel function and as you can see the data now is linearly separable. So you can do linear SVM using xixj or nonlinear SVM or using the kernel function. Now the kernel functions they map data into new space then take the inner product of the new vectors. We mentioned that we need to be familiar with vectors and computing inner, ve inner, inner products of vectors. The image of the inner product of the data is the inner product of the images of the data. And for example, these are two example kernel functions. One of them is polynomial and the other one is Gaussian radial basis function. You can read more about these, but I just wanted you to, to, to I just wanted you to be fair, to, to sort of be aware that support vector machines they can be used to uh, classify non-linearly separable data by using the kernel trick. And even for multi-class problems, we can transform them into binary or two-class problems by using, for example, the the one against all um, approach or any other approach from the suggested approaches in the literature. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.